Oh, man. Hey guys. Can everybody hear me? Okay, awesome. Hi. Hey, you can hear me this time, right? We can hear you this time. <laughs> Do we need a mount or mount <laughs> mute anyone? Or we you already got it? Yeah, I think I got it this time. Okay, cool. I was a rookie last time at it, but make no mistake about it, I'm a quick learner. Hey, we're learning quick over here. Okay, we've <laughs> learned a lot of things about Zoom. I feel like and YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Within a short amount of time, we sure did. Yes. Well, I'm excited to talk about listing presentations. Yes, I'm really excited about this. This is a topic that excites me so much, especially, you know, Stevie, I know just like you, your business is made up of primarily sellers. So talking about listing presentations is something that I absolutely love talking about. So let's go ahead and dive in. So um, everybody that's listening, we are, our focus is to make this very, um a very value-packed night just for what, 30, 30 minute max 30 minute oh, oh wait before we start because um i want you to mention your instagram handle so okay. that if anyone takes photos that they can tag us both on instagram <laughs> good thinking i like that so my instagram handle is at amanda knight dot 
maybe write it in the chat thing too. Yeah. I'm doing it also. Okay, perfect. I was going to say, go ahead and uh, <laughs> shout yours out to Stevie. Yeah, so it's at Soul by Stevie, and I just wrote it in the chat box. Good thinking. And Stevie and I are also growing our YouTube channel, so be sure to check us both out um, there. I think mine is just Amanda Knight. You'll just probably have to scroll down to look for my photo, but um, work in progress. So <laughs> they, are, they are definitely a work in progress, but we could use all the subscribers out there. So okay, so. We want to bring as many items of value to you guys tonight. And so we are going to start with listing presentations and really with items that we bring to an appointment. Um, I think that so many agents get wrapped up in the listing presentation and the comps. And yet there's so many more items of value that you can bring to a seller that will really make you stand out compared to the other agents. Uh, especially if they're interviewing agents. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about those. Okay, so items of value, right? So once I get the phone call that they want me to come over to list the property, one thing that I want to mention that I've learned is get out to the property as soon as possible. Do not delay. Um, literally, my last listing appointment, I was like, I will be there in two hours. <laughs> And I ran into the office and this is all I bring is, um, well, I'm going to show you. So I have my seller guide. So I have these bounded already ready to go in my car. Like I want to always be on point and ready. And then, oh, I think we need to mute somebody. Um, and then my brokerage has this seller guide. So this is like super easy because it's already made up. But um, things that are customized towards the property is, of course, I'm running comps, right? I'm running everything that's recently sold within the last six months, everything that the appraiser is going to be looking at. And then I also bring the numbers from my association. I want to know what's the average day list days on market, um, what percentage of list price are homes receiving. I want to make sure that I'm as educated as possible. This was something that I mentioned in my Instagram story the other day is that I hear a lot of times people are so nervous at their listing appointment. And what has helped me with confidence in that is coming and educated, knowing these numbers, knowing the real estate market. Um, so I bring those, I analyze those before I get there. Um, I bring a net sheet. So I'll bring a, three different price points because um, I'm never telling them like your house is worth X. I'm giving them a range. So, and plus I've never seen their house in person until I get out there. So I don't know what upgrades that they have done or the condition of their home. So I'm bringing three different ranges so that we can discuss those. And um, I'll put in there the commission. My brokerage has a transaction fee and all of the standard closing, um, closing costs. And then the last thing that I bring is my marketing plan. So I have customized a marketing plan. So I already have this drafted up. The only thing is, is that I'm going in and changing out the address and maybe a couple different things. It just depends on the, the price point. So that just makes things so much easier for me. And I'm going to wow them with this when I'm talking about my marketing. And it makes them feel like I customized this for them. But really, I use this on all my properties. So um, what was I going to say about my marketing plan too? Oh, that no one's ever asked me to reduce my commission on a listing. And I feel like it's because I come in prepared. I've got all these marketing materials and I'm really emphasizing on like the thing I talk about the most over these documents that I bring, like, I don't even go over this. This is just reading material for them that I've made about me, my brokerage, about my mission, what I do for listings. But um, the main thing I'm going over with them is that marketing plan. So those are just that five items or one, two, four items that I bring to the property. That's awesome. So it sounds like one thing that really helps you is streamlining your presentation marketing plan. You're really just putting in the address that yeah. changes from property to property. So it sounds like 
you could be ready to go within a listing appointment within just a few minutes. Oh yeah. I just got to pull comps and run that sheet. That's awesome. I love that. And okay. Just had to mute some, um, because I do think that that's super important. We are in such a fast paced, uh, career and just market. I don't know about your market. Actually, I do know more and more the more that you and I connect, our markets aren't that different from each other. And so they're very fast paced. And so it comes down to, you know, speed to lead. And that holds true even for the appointment. So just like you, those are the same items that I'm bringing to an appointment. Um, I'm bringing my marketing plan that includes information about my brokerage, my team. I'm bringing them comps and a net sheet. And I do the same exact thing. I give them three different options, especially because I don't know the condition of their home when I go there. So I know going in because I'm asking them pre-qualifying questions, the condition of their home. So I'm giving them an as is price an investor price, and then like a top of the line market price. And sometimes that top of the line market price means they need to do a few things. But at the same time, if their goal is to net the most amount of money and sell their home without leaving anything on the table, giving them those options really helps them make an informed decision on what's gonna make the most sense. Some of the other things that I like to bring specifically is you know my source of business my favorite source of business is expireds so most expired sellers they don't make the same mistake twice so they interview agents so i like to come with i just it's a folder with just a few options of should they throw something at me i can pull those out and give them to them one of those is interview questions and so if they, if I ask them, do you plan on interviewing any other agents? And they say, yes, I say, great. Here's a list of interview questions that I really challenge you to ask these agents, because I know that I've hit on all of these uh, items of value for you. I also, um, especially if it is an expired, I like to bring the client reviews or, uh, and or, like testimonials or references to say, hey, these sellers were once in your shoes as an expired listing. And they ended up listing and trusting me to do the job and I did that job and they're willing to back me up for it. So call them and see what they have to say about the work that I did compared to their previous agent. That speaks so much volume to these sellers. Yeah, that's awesome. My um one of my last listing appointments, she had asked me for references. And I have in my guide um, some Zillow reviews that sellers have given me. And um, when she asked me for references, I was like, yeah, no problem. I can definitely get that to you. And I was like, I'm going to add that to my guide and give it to everybody and mention it. And what was kind of cool about it, which I think probably everyone could incorporate because I would guess that most people are not giving references. I just never thought of it before, but um, I called all my sellers yeah. just to touch base. Hey, how's it going? You know, how, how are you guys doing in your new place? And, you know, I have a favor to ask. Somebody had asked me for references and I wanted to see if I could put your name down. And it was another way for me to touch base with them and be like, hey, if you know of anybody looking to buy or sell, I would love to be a resource. So that's right. I love that. And especially if you think about it, it's also an opportunity if they haven't given you a review yet to say, hey, I really love serving you and I want to serve other great clients just like you. Would you mind hopping on these three websites, giving me a review? Awesome. And hey, let me ask, if I were to put your name down as a reference, would you back me up and give me a five-star review? So yeah, I love that. That's so great. What are some other items? Um, like for example, my team and I, we bring along with the listing paperwork, we like to bring like what sort of upgrade features does your home offer? What's your average utility bill look like? And the reason being is I tell them, hey, buyers want all of the cards on the table before they make an informed decision to put an offer on your home. And one of those items might be what are the upgrades so that they can see the value in the home and what are the average utility bills look like so that they can make sure it 
suits their budget. And so yeah. it's just something to not necessarily um, like add value to their home, although the upgrades do, but it's something that this is what I do that's going to bring us that perfect buyer. And I'm going to go above and beyond to make sure that we're going to yeah. get the offer possible. Anytime I've shown buyers properties and that information was provided at the house, they thought that was very important. Um, beneficial and they read over all of it. I also have a property feature sheet that is a Canva document so it's nice in color. I put it in one of the clear stands because it's an emotion for a buyer, right? When they go into the house, they want to envision their family or starting a family. Um, so I have this sheet right when they walk in and I have the sellers fill in and hand write these questions that I have, which is, why do you love the home? Why do you love your community? And when they hand write like, oh, we love our neighbor Susie. She's so sweet and helps us with X, Y, Z. And our kids go to school with our neighbor and all those things that just like pull at the heartstrings. It's a really nice touch, I feel like, at the property for a potential buyer to see. And they read that, they feel that emotion. I think it's really nice. I think that's perfect. I... I also love doing that. I haven't done the clear frames and I, I love that idea. I'll do picture frames here and there throughout, but I really like the clear frame idea um, for some of those where it's a picture frame just maybe too much. Um, okay, I'm just going through muting some people. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing, which is, you know, Stevie, you and I always talk about the individual that asks the most questions. They're the ones that really control the conversation. And so breaking that up into questions to ask the seller as far as, you know, where are you going next? And then when you're there at the property, and I think there's really no right or wrong, whether you ask them before you head into the listing appointment or during the listing appointment. I think either way, it's just taking that next level of building rapport and figuring out how you can use that to, you know, one, help bring that buyer and then two, you know, get them towards that motivation. Because if they're a, a scale of one to 10 and they're a four, I want to get them up to a nine, 10 so that we can get their home on the market and get it sold, you know? Yeah, I think taking control of the conversation is really important. Um, something that I thought of when I was a first agent, you know, and I was going, or new, and I was going to my first appointment, I just had no idea what to do. I'm like, okay, when I get there, do I sit at the table? Do we talk numbers? Do I get a tour? What do I do on the tour? Like, I just had no idea. So for people who are new, I know there's people on here who have been real estate agents for years, but I'm just going to mention this for newer agents is when I get to the property, I am trying to, I am trying to come off as friendly and I want to be able to relate with them. And I want to have like real conversations. Most of my customers end up being friends. Mm -hmm. So when I, even when I'm walking up to the house, I'm like, what can I relate with them about? Like, do they have like, you know, Jacksonville Jaguars are huge here. If they have like a flag outside, when I go inside, you know, something I'm going to mention right away is like, Hey, you like the Jags? You have season tickets. Did you see that game? And that's kind of what I'm doing throughout the house is I'm just trying to find things, you know, um, that I can relate with them on, but I'm also, um, aggressive. I want them to make sure that I'm educated, passionate, go getter. Like those are what I want them to get away from with meeting with me. So when I'm getting in the house, I do a tour first. The homeowner is so proud of their home. They want to show it to you. Plus they want to showcase to you why they want to list, you know, at their price. Right? So let them guide you, but I control the conversation. So each room, honestly, you want to educate yourself as much as possible on the property. You're going to get people calling you, asking you a ton of questions and you got to sell it. I feel like I, it's been so beneficial, me knowing so much about the property, me calling the real estate agent, hey, are you familiar with this neighborhood? What questions do your buyers have? Um, in each room, I just think of all the questions I can ask them from you know things that are gonna be on the seller's disclosure, home inspection, 
I want to have the best listing description also. So I'm like, how tall are these ceilings? What kind of countertops? What kind of flooring? Because I want to be as descriptive as possible when I'm describing the property to people. So when I'm doing the tour, I'm tr I am trying to be friendly and personable and relate with them. But at the same time, I want to educate myself on all the details of the home. And then after the tour um, is when I'm like, hey, okay, let's sit down, let's sit down and talk. And I'm not talking numbers right away. I'm like, I wanna show you my marketing and why I am the best person to list your property. And I go over my marketing plan. I show them, I have a plan for every single detail before we even put the home on the market. And then I have a week by week play and I'm like, look, I'm going to give you this. So you can make sure like a lot of real estate agents will say, oh yeah, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, but this is a checklist that I use myself and I'm making sure I love checklists. So I'm making sure that everything's getting checked off on this and you will be able to, double check too. you know what I mean? So I showcase all these things. I showcase all the money that I'm spending on their investment and um, that's when I'm mentioning the seller guide a little bit, touching base on a couple different things about the listing process. And I always mention when I list this home, what I need to do before I list, like just already expecting the listing. I have my last listing appointment. I came to the house with the lockbox and the sign. So, um, I'm always just like go getter, passionate, ready. And then I'll talk about the comps and go over each property, you know, I'll, I go through each listing, I look through each photo and educate yourself so that you can use that knowledge. If they wanna list really high and they're trying to compare it to these other properties and I'm like, well, that has a brand new roof. They just did the plumbing, they just did the electrical, they just got a brand new AC, like you didn't do all those things. Like those are ways to get them to price it right because you don't wanna list a property and just let it sit and you, I invest a lot of money in my listing, so I don't want to invest that money and us list high and then expire. So I need to educate them. If we're not matching on the numbers, I want to make sure that, that I'm ready. And that's when we go over the net sheet and we're breaking down the different list prices. And like I said, no one's ever asked me to reduce my commission yet. Anyways, not <laughs> That's awesome. I love those questions. And those are a lot of the questions that I ask as well, because you know, it is important that you're educated on the property. And I always want to feel like as if it's my home that I'm selling. You know, I want to know exactly like, you know, top to bottom, left to right, and everything in between so that I can use all of those tools in my tool belt to provide that value to the buyers. So I think that that's huge. One of the things that you hit on, which I love is what are the top three items that you're looking for in the agent that you hire so that I can focus the conversation around those key items that are most important to them? Because I can talk all day about marketing, but if at the end of the day, they just want to know how I'm going to communicate with them and what I'm going to price their property at, well, I'm going to hit on those things and I'm not going to focus on marketing that much. You know, I'm structuring the conversation about what is most important to them and focusing on those motivation factors, which you know are where will you be moving to? What's taking you there? Why is that important to your family? When do you wanna be there? Because again, it's gauging that motivation. If they say, yeah, if it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Maybe they're not the people for me or maybe their time is just not right now. And so when you gauge and ask those questions, you know, just like you said, I'm trying to build a relationship with these clients that are going to turn into friends and, you know, friends for a while. And so in order to do that, I've got to ask the right questions to make sure that this is going to be a win-win relationship together. And I also do say, so when I, when I, uh, get to the listing appointment, you know, I tried to get together and ask if I can set my stuff up at their kitchen table and then take the tour with them. Again, I, I want to know the same thing. I want to know what they take the most pride in, you know, what they absolutely love about this home, what they're going to miss most and all of those things. And then I say, 
okay, you know, asking that question of what they're looking for in the agent that they hire, and then diving into the listing presentation from there, the marketing strategies we're going to use, and then going into the comps. I really save that for last because I want to, I want to build that rapport with them. I want to show them why my team and I are going to be, you know, their forever agent. And so providing that value to them from the beginning and then diving into numbers because I don't want to come off on the back, on the wrong foot if our numbers don't match up. But again, just like you said, it's asking the right questions and then talking that through to come up with a strategic price that's going to have their home sell, not sit. Now, one of the things that I've recently done is I have a specific notepad that I take with me to my listings, my listing presentations, so that I can, you know, refer back to those notes specifically. And instead of like feeling like all of my notes are everywhere, you know, they're on my laptop one day, they're in this binder one day, they're in this folder. So I have one specific folder and it's labeled with their address, their contact information, and every single detail about their property and then it allows me to reflect back and say oh yeah that's right you tell me that your roof is six years old great i don't have to call them and ask or look to the seller's disclosure i have that notepad right there any other um thoughts or um, um so I will say that a couple of things to mention just from past experience, a couple of questions to ask is like, is there anything that would come up on the home inspection that I should know about? Right. Is there anything that I should know? Because I would much rather address this issue now before we have it on the market and people trying to negotiate with us and use that against us. Um, I know a lot of people in this market, they like to do um, pre-listing home inspections. The home inspector will come in and inspect the property. Um, so I've mentioned that sometimes if the property is... Um, you know, need some work and I'm kind of unsure about some things. If the roof is older, I will go ahead and call a homeowner's insurance company and start pulling quotes and see, are we going to have any issues getting this um, quoted? And then if anyone says anything to me, a buyer's agent, you know, oh, you know, issues with the roof or, you know, whatever, I could be like, look, I already have three quotes right here and it's insurable and these are good rates and just educate yourself as much as you can. Also, there's a lot of flips here. So a lot of permits are pulled. They're not getting closed out. That can be a huge pain. Um, so I, I like to look at the permits before I go out to the property, but even if it looks all good online, I still have that conversation with them. Um, you know, if it's a newer home and they haven't done any additions or anything like that, you don't really need to ask that. But most, a lot of times on these flips or we have a lot of older historic homes, um, I ask them if there's any permitting issues, anything I need to know about that, because we want to get that taken care of right away. Um, there's a lot of HOA neighborhoods. I've had several times that I did not find out that the homeowner didn't pay the, um, or isn't up to date with the HOA dues. And then we have to deal with that later. So just, and these are simple questions that you should feel comfortable asking them. Like, Hey, you know, what I'm, I want to know, they're going to probably be impressed. Like, okay, she's educated. She's on it. She's preparing me. Um, what else did I write on here? I think that was pretty much it. Just a couple last last questions. Um, I, oh, so I did get a question from somebody. Um, okay, so I'd love to know your answer. I gave her, I believe I gave her my answer or I told her I was gonna talk about it. But she had asked me, what do you say to a seller when they ask you, um, I believe the question was how many, deals have you done? How many listings? How long have you been in the business? And you're like brand new and you got nothing. What do you say? So that is a great question. Yeah, I was like, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because when I was first in the business, that's exactly the question that I was super nervous to get. And once I learned my scripts and I was very confident I never got that question again. So yeah. first and foremost, learn your scripts. 
the response that I would have is, that's a great question. I actually just celebrated two years in the business. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> because instead of them, instead of just saying, I just celebrated two years, or let's just say like two months, I just hit two months. You know, it's like, I just hit two months. Isn't that awesome? And they're like, oh yeah, good for you. How many homes have you sold? You know, and that is a question that I lean on to my brokerage for. Yeah. And, um, especially when I was first getting started in the business, I would take those graphs with me. We have these graphs that show, um, you know, out of last month, this is how many homes our office sold. We represented this amount of sellers, this amount of buyers. So I'd say, you know, one out of one in four homes is, uh, that transaction is between a Keller Williams agent out of my office specifically. So those odds are pretty good. You have a 25% chance that I not only list your home, but then we bring the, the buyer's agent as well. And so I think the name recognition is huge. Wouldn't you agree? And it's asking. I like it. It's putting it into a different. I know. It's, yeah, it's good. It's putting it into a different phrase where, you know, you're, you're not just ending the conversation like two months. Right. <laughs> I'm new, you know. And I always use it to my advantage to say, you can bet that an agent that's been in the business for 15 years does not have as much grind, hustle, and hunger as I do being in the business two months. So oh I'm gonna work every single day in and out to bring you a buyer and present your home to a buyer's agent because I don't have that referral business like an experienced agent does. You want an agent that's gonna be focused on your home, right? And so that's the way that I get over that objection. So I think that that's a great question, especially if you are a newer agent and you haven't gone on many listing appointments, but you can use the numbers from your brokerage and you can use the fact that you are new, you are hungry for business and, you know, does your brokerage provide mentorship? Do you have some sort of stats in the area that stand out between other brokerages or other realtors? Use that to your advantage. Or if you have a coach, you know, it's, yes, I have a mentor who closed 250 homes last year. So she and I meet on a weekly basis so that you can guarantee that your home is being presented to a top agent and we're going to you know, mastermind together and come up with a strategic plan to get your home under contract. And I'm going to be getting that advice from top producing agents, but you're going to get that one-on-one -on -one relationship with me. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Um, okay, awesome. We're at 630 and I am so proud of us because we were thinking that we were going to have like a full hour on this conversation. Well, I feel like I could keep, we, I'm sure you could too. Like we could keep talking about this, but I know everyone's so busy. I guess the last thing that I'll mention is kind of like the closing with the listing appointment, which we can dive in deeper. If you guys have more questions about like what we bring or the tour or questions to ask, like we can go in deeper, but we just kind of wanted to touch base real quickly on each point and make it 30 minutes only. But I will say the end of the conversation, kind of how I wrap it up is depending on our, our, our talk, like how motivated are they? When did, did they tell me that they were looking to move? Um, and I always just kind of say, you know, just keep me posted, um, you know, if I'm not listing it right away, because some people will have me do a listing appointment, they are a couple months out. Um, and I will just say, you know, keep me posted because I have a lot of work to do for you before I put that property on the market. Remember my marketing guide and all the things I have to do before that list date. So just keep me posted because I got to schedule the photographer, the videographer, X, Y, Z before we do all those things. Um, and then, you know, just like quick and easy casual. I'm not going in for the kill and trying to get 
the listing agreement signed. Um, and then just one thing that I'll do right afterwards is I will send them a handwritten note. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to meet with me, a tour of your home. I'll reference something that we talked about or in their house. And I'll just say, you know, I really look forward to hearing back from you. And I just keep in touch with them. I'll mail them. You know, if they're a couple months out, I'll mail them. Um, it just depends what mailer I have like going out at that time. Like I recently did a Jag magnet. Could be Christmas and I'm sending them a card um, or it, like a market update for their neighborhood letting them know oh this just sold for X amount this is a good price this just got listed keeping them updated and showing that you are not too busy and that you're on top of it you're on top of this neighborhood and keeping in touch with them I think is really really important handwritten notes people love that people do love handwritten note cards and I will definitely agree with you on that one thing that I found recently that I love implementing is I'll get their email address and I will set them up on a search within their community. And so it, let's just say that their community name is um, Walnut Hills Estates. So I might put them on an auto MLS search of market update on Walnut Hills Estates. And then in the reoccurring email, I put hey, did you see this property? And then it'll have the property, you know, the photo and the link, the listing and all of those things for them to see. And I do it for actives, active option, pending, sold, expired cancels. I do it all across so that they can see really what's going on in their subdivision. And then I BCC myself on those emails so that it gives me a reason to call them. Yeah. And I say, hey, did you see that your neighbor across the street recently put their home on the market, but then took it off a month later? And they're like, yeah, I did see that. And actually, I know them. So I'm going to go ask them, you know, or something like that, where it just really keeps you in tuned with their neighborhood and to know what's going on at all times. And it gives you an excuse to reach back out to them. This is a great question. What do you say to a seller to reduce sales price if the home is above market value? What I do is if I know it's listed too high um, and I will not take a listing that's listed way too high, then I just know their personality and they're not realistic. Right. It's not worth it to me. But if I see that there's potential to get there, I will say, look, um, I'm happy to market this property, do all these things, list it at your price. But we are gonna put in the listing agreement that it depends on the price point, 14 days or after 30 days that we're gonna reduce it 2%. And then every 14 or 30 days, we're gonna reduce it every 14, 13 days. So 2% and I get that um, conversation over and done with at the appointment if it's overpriced because I want to set the expectation and I don't need to be worried or reaching out to them after X days and being like hey you know it's not selling we should probably reduce it like I've already set that expectation ahead of time that's what I like to do that's exactly what I do too I love that it's getting it handled right up front and letting them know and voicing your opinion so many agents think, you know, I don't want to tell them, you know, $15,000 below. They're never going to list with me. Yeah. Well, fun about that. They're going to respect that so much more than you just agreeing to their price and then just listing it for that. I do the same thing. And I just also ask them the question, hey, we just went over these comps and the market, not me, the market is saying that you're home should be priced here why do you feel like it should be priced here and then letting them answer that yeah because I think that that's you know when they voice it out loud and give that I think that that brings them around to yeah maybe you're right you have a good point here so, I really come in with the expectation that every seller wants to list high because that's just how it is. Like no matter what, I come in with this range of three different numbers. I know where their mind's at. And I really try to use that time when we're discussing comps to emphasize like, okay, this property had a brand new roof. This property had done these upgrades. That's why I try to educate myself going through each listing to kind of plant the seed of all these things of these other properties so that when we get down to discussing the dollar amount, it kind of sets the expectation. I agree with you so much. And that's why 
you know, especially like expired and things that I ask them, how did your previous realtor come up with the price or how did you come up with your price? And oh, then yeah, we do a lot of expireds. Yes. We got to do an expired training and I'm just going to sit and watch because I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely do one coming up, but you know, it's just asking that question so that you can get the clarity around what, why they're coming up with that number and then making adjustments for there because so many people say, well, we took the average dollar per square foot because that's what you do, right? Yeah, no, that's not really how that works, but let's go through and let's show you how a you know, strategic, um, how a real agent gets it done. Let me just say it. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Well, engage with us on Instagram. Let us know if you want us to keep doing this. Our plan is to keep doing this every Wednesday. If y'all want us to and want us to show up, let us know what questions you have, what topic ideas, because I would love to keep doing this. I think it's fun. Yeah. And we're growing each and every week. First week started with nine. Last week was to 13, I think. Today we're at 24 and that doesn't even count the other streams that we're on. So it's super exciting. So you guys check us out on Instagram. You should have our handle names and let us know what you want to hear because we want to keep growing this and keep it going. So that's it for it up. All right. All right, you guys have a great week. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye.